Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another special episode of All to Know Better. Uh, James, uh, thanks very much for inviting me on to, to speak with our guest tonight. I'm, uh, I have to say, very excited about this one. What's your feeling? Absolutely ecstatic for this one. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a little bit of a um, oh, fanboy moment, so to speak, but uh, <laughs> yeah, dying to get getting involved with this one, so it's going to be a good bit, one. Bit, bit of a trip down memory lane, some, some great um, great memories uh, for, this, for this guest time with us, uh, uh, and with, with with that in mind, do you want to do you want to welcome our, our guest? Absolutely. So we have the very very good privilege of welcoming Mr. Robert Molinar. Welcome, Robert. How are you? Welcome, I'm, Robert. I'm very well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to how, see you. You've how been are you? Good oh, we're all we're all well, thank you. We're all very well. How's uh, how's the last twelve eighteen months been for you in this crazy uh, pandemic that we've been having? Uh, a, a bit quiet actually. Um, yeah. Yes, I've been uh, stuck home more or less. So, uh, and and um, uh, it's just dealing with the situation uh, with with not not having uh, uh, a coaching job. Um, but that's all right. I, I, and it's it's an awkward situation with the with COVID. Uh, that you know, one season they just stopped everything. That's it. Yeah. And, and the next year you nowhere welcome because it, obviously with with the um the problems it, it can cause so yeah. um you're more or less um stuck home but that's so okay uh, i enjoy that but obviously um it's about time to get back working ways yeah that's it Bob, I'm sure you like the rest of us. You've been concentrating and doing your gardening and all that sort of stuff. I've, I've no doubt. Um, so since obviously, um, since obviously you've left Leeds United, you've been moving on to doing all sorts of coaching and managerial sort of stuff. Um, but we'll go back because um, everyone's got a different story to tell about how they got into football and stuff. Um, so how did you start playing football as a, as a young lad? Well, that's simple because my brother played football. And um, it was, you know, it w was quite a, s a small. It, it was not not a question actually. It was, it was always always football uh, on, in in school. Always football um, uh, in, in the backyard. Yeah. So it was just a matter of time to uh, being able to join a, a club. And that was at about uh, at that time about the age of six that you go onto a Saturday morning and you just train, and then um, all the, the seasons after that you, you you join a team and you're in youth football and and and, and that is more or less how it, how it all started. Yeah. So all the all the playground stuff and uh, kicking lumps out of your mates and stuff in the in the playgrounds and. Yeah. And moving it on to obviously yeah, in, in the senior senior stages as well. Um, so we'll just cover a little bit of background stuff. So you made 47 league appearances for Leeds, scoring five goals. Um, arrived in January '97 for a fee of a million pounds, which was massive, obviously at the time for us, uh, big money. Uh, but prior to that, you were in England for a trial with Tottenham. So what I want to know is how you ended up with um, doing a trial for Tottenham, but ended up being being a Leeds player. How did that happen? Well, that, that is uh, quite an interesting story because at that time, um, I believe uh, there were a few, Rem, Ramon Vega and John Scales, who right. is obviously a, a, a Harrogate man. Yeah. Um, they were all, uh, the, there were two players that were, uh, both clubs uh, were interested in and they both joined um, uh, Spurs, and it was our uh, our uh, mid-season break, our winter break, and um, uh, Leeds came to see me uh, once or twice. In uh, uh, David O'Leary and um, and George Graham came to see yeah. me, and then all of a sudden I was uh, trialing at Spurs. And I was together in the hotel with with Ramon Vega, and well, they wanted to see me uh, uh, maybe even play a game. Okay. And then Leeds felt as if they were um, 
fishing behind the net again. <laughs> so they made they made an, an offer. So they uh, they made a bigger chance of me going to Leeds instead of uh, uh, going to Spurs as well. Yeah. So um, when that happened, it all went fast. Uh, I didn't play uh, any game. I, I stopped training. I think I had, uh, I think one or two sessions um, uh, at Spurs at that time. Uh, but then Leeds made an offer, and and um, and and we went to uh, from from London in the plane up to Leeds, and uh, it was all sorted in in that in that day. I think it was a, a Thursday. Uh, I trained on the Friday. And and played Leicester on the Saturday. That's crazy, yeah. that Robert. The, wait, wait. You st- started Sorry, mate, your career. No, you're all right. You started your career at uh, FC Volendam. Um, but was that was that is that, is that were they in the Dutch top league at that time then, or yes. was it was yeah they were because yeah. they're not they're not yeah. anymore, are they? No, they're not. Um, when I joined, they were uh, Premier Premier level, and and they were for about eleven years at the trot. And uh, when I left, uh, it, I think it it took one or two seasons that they uh, dropped, and I don't. I think they've come up again uh, since that. But uh, yes, yeah. they were Premier level. Uh, but then again, it was it's it's, it's a, a small village actually, right. which uh, and they're crazy about football, and and they've got a, a very large youth development uh, um, academy. Uh, but it's a very small uh, uh, club, so it was a bit of a uh, surprise that uh, I went from such a small club, although it was Premier level, uh, into the Premier League without any um, international experience, and, and you didn't yeah. see that very often at that at that time as well. Great, and and, Vol- and Volendam is that how far is that from? You're from Zaandam, aren't you? Yeah, that's is that, is that relatively close. That about, or? Yeah, that's about twenty minutes drive. Yeah. Oh right, so it's pretty much your local club you signed for then, is it, when you when you were yeah, back that, in, I think yeah, it was nine. I, nah. correct. It, it was a twenty minutes drive. It's it's very local, although uh, being in Zandam is is closer to Amsterdam, uh, right? And and maybe a little bit further from Alkmaar, where the, where you've got AZ uh, Alkmaar. I, I went in my youth. Uh, I went to train with them as well uh, in the right. academy uh, uh, while I was setting up the youth academy. Uh, so it, but it it was um, Volendam uh, um, often go go to the amateurs to see if they can you know uh, uh, get a player um, mm-hmm. and and develop them so they mm-hmm. can um, and 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 that worked. It worked uh, very. Very well for me. It was okay. four, four, four and a half years, and I went to the Premier League. I was I was an amateur at I think six or seven level. No, that's that's not correct at that time because all everything's changed. But it was one, two, three. I think fifth level. I was at fifth right. level uh, at, at amateurs. I went to uh, Eredivisie, which is Premier League level. Uh, from one season to the next, and then after four and a half years, I joined Leeds in the Premier League, which was obviously a big step again. Mm, so, although, although I was only 22 when I joined uh, professional football, um, the, the career rocketed into the Premier League, and there was something that I didn't expect at that point yeah. anymore. <laughs> how did how did that how did that feel uh, to to be go from from playing for pretty much a village side, although they were Premier League. How did that feel to have, first of all, not just Leeds United interest, but Spurs as well, uh, and actually know that this is going to be life-changing for you, you know, and there's going to be a decent sum of money paid for you as a, as a player, um, and it's, it's effectively is going to change and take over your life, you know. Uh, what was what was the first thoughts when you when you signed that contract? Uh, it was a dream come true. It was a, a dream come true. I didn't know a lot about Leeds, I have to be honest. Uh, there was interest uh, from uh, Middlesbrough. Um, there was interest about from Spurs, and there was interest about from Leeds. And um, 
obviously the uh, Spurs I did know a little bit about. I didn't really follow uh, English football, but I knew that the kind of football they played that was uh, for me uh, a logic step. If 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 I would have made a step, it would have been to English football, and uh, I was just delighted that it all. Um, uh, came true, uh, but it was a dream. I, I never expected uh, when I joined Volendam that I could make such a huge step into the Premier League. Oh. Um, and uh, being for a club at that point uh, in a, in a more or less rebuild with with uh, George Graham, and and it, it just it, it just fitted all together. And and uh, I was so happy to. Uh, to to have made that step, I can only imagine what it was like um, going from a, a small club and then obviously stepping out in uh, Elland Road. What would, what were it like? I mean, obviously the contrast is huge, but what were it like stepping out in front of the crowd at Elland Road and, and obviously making your debut? Oh, uh, it was unbelievable. Those those days, those few days that when it all came about, uh, what what I was saying, uh, going from London to to Leeds, signing a contract. I remember uh, phoning my dad. Uh, saying that I've I, I signed that three and a half year contract, crying my eyes out, um, um, stepping onto the uh, training pitch at Allen Road, and immediately felt as if I were were there all my life. Right. Uh, the boys were really really great with with David Weatherall, uh, with uh, Gary Kelly, um, uh, Gunnar Haller. Um, they all make me made me feel so much at home, yeah. um, and and to be honest, um, in Holland we weren't so used to uh, that they made us feel so so at home. Uh, yeah. I remember having some um, Serbian players at Volendam, and um, I felt a little bit um, guilty of not giving. Them Respect as I got Lee, uh, more or less, the lead showed me how it should be done, uh, so players can feel at home and and they can you know can, they can show everything what they can, uh, and and not being second guessed on what whatever on personality or or whatever. They just give full con uh, full confidence and. Um, and and that with the players, but also uh, with management. Yeah, we do hear a lot from. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry mate. I was just saying that we do hear a lot, a lot from the lads who were like Gilfy said the same, Simon said the same. I know when uh, Luke interviewed Andy Cousins and and a, and a couple of others, they all said the same. You know, the team and the club and and everything, the fan base are always quite welcome. Um, do you by any chance stay in touch with any of the players that you used to play with? Are, are you still? Uh, Obviously, you don't go for beers and all that sort of stuff, but do you uh, ever ring each other, call each other, emails and stuff? Uh, yes. Uh, well, Facebook and, and all sorts of uh, social media uh, uh, is, is such a great thing because I think if that wasn't about, then uh, the contact would, would be uh, very small. Uh, yeah. But I still... Uh, uh, we, we, we've came back to England a few times and... and uh, and seen uh, 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 Nigel Martin and his family. Um, so we've done that uh, uh, twice, I think. Um, we haven't been back that many times, but uh, being back in the area is great. Being seeing old neighbors is great. Uh, but also uh, on Facebook, Gary Kelly, um, Stephen McPhail, um, uh, McMaster, even uh, uh, going down uh, uh, um, in in Australia, it's it's all a, a mouse click away. So um, yeah, true. We we do see uh, quite a lot, and especially now with Lee's being coming back up, um, and and I, I must say that uh, especially uh, uh, Kells is is doing a tremendous job in Ireland to promote Leeds. With a special uh, website with with uh, all kinds of um, um, Irish um, 
uh, supporters. Yeah. And uh, and every game um, they're ready to to see uh, what, what the outcome is. I I don't see every game. I, I'm not able to see every game here in in Holland. Only uh, uh, well, uh, the last game we saw because it it was a a, a, a good. Um, how do you a say it? A, a big, a big game. Yeah. So, um, uh, so sometimes we see it, and we we all join. My uh, my both both my sons are, are big fans since we came back, and because they were they were very little when when we left. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't really got a lot of the excitement. Uh, but coming back over the years and seeing the stadium and and being there when the crowds were there, and they they realized how how big the um, uh, the time was when I went, was there, and uh, so they became fans. And uh, if if the game is on, uh, we join each other and, and watch the game. Uh, so uh, that's that's great. Any yeah. of your sons going to follow in the footsteps of the father? Then Robert, have we got any footballers in the fan in the family? Well, uh, both sons are. Uh, I've, I've got a daughter as well. It's not a football uh, footballer. You, you see that a lot uh, these days. That. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, uh, yeah, the girls start playing football, but she doesn't. Uh, the oldest two are uh, Jeroen, who is 21, but um, is a physiotherapist, but uh, not a professional footballer. Um, and Niels is 19, and um, and they both play football, but on amateur level. Right. Okay. They so they are they are fanatic. Uh, and they can't wait to start playing again because obviously that has been locked down as well. Of course, of course, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we're all we're all feeling the the, uh, the pinch of that. I'm afraid. I mean, I've I've I put on a few pounds. I don't know about you, Luke. Not being able to go and uh, <laughs> kick a bit of leather around a football pitch, definitely. I've had my first uh, day back in the gym tonight, actually. Funnily enough, because we've reopened today, Robert. So I've been sat in the gym. Oh, yeah. for tonight for uh for an hour or so before we came on here and absolutely killing already i know i'm gonna be sore tomorrow <laughs> done, <laughs> done too much done too much yeah. the first day. yeah that's yeah. it <laughs> what's your uh, what what's your fondest memory of leeds robert what it, it can be anything like you know obviously being in the area or playing for the club or anything if someone mentions leeds united what do you instantly remember S- sometimes when um especially uh, last uh, a few days ago, my sister gave me uh, um, old photographs, and they were uh, photographs that they didn't put in a book, so they weren't so uh, so important. But they still gave a few memories back uh, yeah. when when we were there, the first days, uh, going to the stadium, um, having my dad, uh, my sister, my brother there close to me and and uh and and, and my uh, wife to you know just uh seeing the area seeing the stadium uh knowing how um special it was uh you see that back in those uh, uh photographs and then memories come back yeah and uh there are too many to uh um, um to to because then we will Probably, especially with my my English, we'll be sitting here till uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning. Uh, but uh, that, on a on a personal level, was so special um, because obviously you, you're you're trying to share those moments. Uh, I can also remember uh, being in the hotel uh, with my wife, being in bed. Everything is strange. Everything is. Um, uh, and, and saying to each other, what are we doing here? Uh, uh, why are we Why are we here? We couldn't, you know, we, we had a good life in Holland uh, and we left it to, to go here. And we didn't, at that point, uh, uh, know what we were going to uh, live through. Uh, and it was all worth it. And, um, and obviously with, with all the, all the pluses and all the mi- uh, all the minuses have, have been injured, heavily injured. Where leads were were going at, as a, as a rocket, um, uh, being in a in a, a plane crash uh, incident. Um, 
you know, th those, I, I would do it all again uh, to just to, to get, you know, accept all the minuses just to, to relive all the, all the pluses with, with all the people you, I, I, I don't think you, you realize that at the time because you're in a football career, you're, you're very concentrated on, on yourself and, and on your performances and trying to, you know, make the team and trying yeah. to uh, uh, be on your toes all the time that, and everything is about football, you know, recuperation, the training, uh, uh, um, preparing, um, uh, food, um, everything. So, so it's, it's a lot of um, being focused on, on the job, but, um, and, and then it, it, you know, it probably takes you to have memories and, and maybe sometimes even regrets that you, you didn't live it as, as well as you could being, mm -hmm. you know, knowing what you've, you're going through and, yeah. and, and that it can all be different, uh, and less. Yeah. Sorry, you go just on, accept it too, you accept it too easy. Maybe at, at that yeah. point, taking things for granted a little bit too much, maybe is, is a, a regret. Um, yeah, you have from all those days, you, you just realize it too much afterwards that you've been living yeah. a dream more or less yeah absolutely so with 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 that in with that in mind robert we're, we're just talking about your career what sort of what sort of bloke were you then around the changing room were you were you one of the, you know were you a hard trainer did you get really stuck in were you, were you sort of what what would you think if, if if you had to describe yourself in say through five words what would your teammates say about you um yeah hard trainer um, um, were you serious? Were you fun? Yeah. Were, was there a, yeah. no, were you, were you a joker? Uh, no, not a joker. I, I left that up to uh, uh, Gary Kelly. Uh, <laughs> he was much much better at at that uh, than I uh, than I was. Um, no, enjoying the ride, uh, being a, um, a, a a trainer. I always loved training, although. The running sessions was re were really hard. I remember them, um, uh, but uh, I think you know, having made the steps that I made, uh, it all went through um, pretty late on in my uh, in my youth. Uh, it all came from developing and and hard training. So that was always been the basis of uh trying to accomplish things and um uh, i stuck with things and and it in the end it turned out to uh gave me a premier league career yeah. yeah and that was much more than i anticipated on yeah you were coached by uh george graham signed you for leeds didn't he and yeah. o'leary yeah. o'leary sold sold you on to bradford um Correct. what the two what was the differences in the two? And did you have a preference between the two managers in terms of their management style, their training sessions? Um, I think the, the the development from Leeds were, I think, in the right order where George Graham was really, um, how do you call it, um, step by step. Mm -hmm. um, so... I, 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 yes, and and it was, uh, you know, working the back four uh, uh, tirelessly, um, trying to get things in order, so we could stop the opposition from playing. And then we got in players that needed more. They needed more uh, initiative, and then um, O'Leary came in, and he took that. Uh, he, he took leads uh, on with um, more position play in training and um, uh, having more youth uh, in in the team, and obviously uh, with uh, uh, with the, with the experience also with with David T and, and stuff. But the much more initiative in the style of play came through O'Leary, and I think that was the next step um uh, mm. that who did you prefer to play for Ooh. which one was your favorite to play for 
Um, well, just Graham, because uh, I, I, I did get injured, uh, and, and that was, I think it was a 17-month and even longer, I think 20, 20 months uh, injury. So, and in the meantime, I think, um, I'm not sure if I got injured. I think I got injured under uh, Graham. And it, I'm not, yeah, and got fit under Graham as well. But then quite early on after that, um, the, the change came, I think. And yeah, was that I an Elka? Was that really... an Elka that did you cruise yet? Yeah, knee on knee yes. one or something, I think. You, I remember you. Uh, yeah, you no, it wasn't. It, was it. it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a wild challenge or anything. I, I, I got the ball and I was expecting him on my left. Uh, from behind and he came so I had the ball on my right and then he surprised me coming from behind on my right and I I tried to uh, protect the ball and then he, he more or less uh, run into my back so I, I went over my knee uh, at that point and and uh, right so it was it was more an accident than than uh, than a f really foul play uh, yeah he was just not very uh, he, he never asked about me or anything after the game. Maybe he, he, he couldn't find me or anything, but he was always a little bit, um, how do you call it? Um, a bit cocky. Well, yeah, arrogant. Yeah, yeah. yeah arrogant yeah. and cocky, Hanelka, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, did, it's a funny you, thing you, because I, 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 went, uh, I went to Rode SA, Kerekrade, yeah. uh, as, a, as a manager in, I think, 2017. And he was there as a, a friend of, a, of the guy who, who bought the club. And he was trying to set up the youth academy. So it was all, only uh, so much that I got back in contact with him. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it never came to a, a meeting. So uh, he, he more or less, when I came, he more or less left the club, so to speak. So, uh, right. But it was very, very close. Right. Did, did, did you hold any sort of grudge then for that? I know you said it wasn't an accident. It was it was an accident, sorry. There was no, it was no, no malice in it. But um, did you hold any grudges? Did, did you still hold it against him maybe? Because you missed a, a, no. quite a good portion of your playing career. Yeah, well, it, I, uh, no, I don't hold. I'm not good at holding grudges any, anyway. Uh, but also, no, no, I think it was it was an accident and, and I, ca I can't blame him for uh for this uh at all actually it just yeah. one of those things it, it just, just wish sometimes he might have happens. himself a little better that's all with the way well you know, the maybe yeah you know, maybe that but um uh, i forgive him for that as well because you know uh he he, he couldn't he couldn't help himself so and and, and um it, i just went on with it as well you, you just immediately you try and and get back to uh, recovery. So uh, I never dwell dwelled on it. Mm. Oh, good. Well, such so the uh, obviously shows the your your strength of character, I suppose, and all any grudges and all that sort of thing. I think I'd have uh, definitely had something to say. If uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I think my memory isn't good enough for that. To hold, <laughs> all right. to, uh, hold grudges. <laughs> yeah. I'm a forgiving guy. No, nah, good on you. Uh, Luke, do you want to do your uh, five special five questions? Or your I do, five? yeah, but I've, I've, I've just got a few more bits I'd like to talk about before yeah, I get yeah, on no, to yeah, that, yeah, if yeah, that's yeah. all right. Um, I'm going to try and keep, I'll probably have you here all night, Robert, to be honest, because yeah, I'm pretty starstruck, to be honest. Firing questions, um, yeah. So um, you obviously played under some great captains at Leeds United while you were there. Um, uh, who was the best captain, do you think, out of the lot? Because obviously I think when he signed, it was, was it probably Lucas Radaby? Was he the captain then? Uh, I think it's a good question. That is, I think it was David Weatherall. Yeah, I I, yeah it probably was. Yeah. Least, uh, um, and and I have to say, they, I, David really took me by the hand playing in in zonal because I wasn't used to playing in zonal. We were men marking. We were used to men marking and um, remembering that. I only had one session before the game against Leicester on the on the Saturday, and I can remember that session because he was constantly coaching me 
um, and and getting me at, at the right spots at you know uh, and and uh, so maybe if he wasn't the captain at that point then I, I felt he was because uh, he, he really took me by the hand and uh, uh, and he did a great job trying to get me in that you know in that defensive organiz- uh, organization and he, yeah. he did really well I think it was a, a five at the back at that point we played mm-hmm. against Leicester so that was, that was really yeah. special for me they like to lump it up up quick, didn't they? They had to like to lump it up to the strikers a lot back in them days. That was unbelievable because we what, uh, the only thing we did was trying to hit Brian Dean, and then at some miracle, uh, when he had the ball on, it was always in Rob Wallace's feet, in my recollection. So um, yes, we did hit it up, and and um, but we 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 went from there and. They they always uh, seem to get keep the ball up. Yeah, it was still great football, still great to watch. It's a little bit different now, obviously, uh, with the with the Bielsa ball that we play. Uh, but yeah, definitely good it to is, watch. It is a bit different, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it is, I think, better to watch. Yeah, just on that, actually, Bielsa ball and the current squad. We've obviously got a young Dutchman playing in the same position as you, Robert, at the moment, Pascal Stroik. What do you make? What do you make of him? And uh, how, how good do you think he could be? For, not just for us, but but also hopefully for the Dutch national team. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah, I think he is a he's a mix. He's a mix uh, Dutch Belgium, Belgian, uh, yeah. and I've, I'm not sure, but has he decided to play for Belgium? I don't. Or, know, I've not heard. Right. I, I'm. I'm. I, I don't know for sure, but uh, I I remember that that were uh, that were talking about him. You know, making a choice, and um, I think he went from. Did he went from Ajax to England? Uh, I so. I think they got him out of the academy, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure. Just... I'm not not hundred percent sure on that. No, sure. but I I I do think he is. Uh, well, you, you know, I I do th- think he is um, a defender coming from. From Holland, yeah, from Ajax. Uh, yeah, from Ajax, yeah. We even played midfield at some point, so mm-hmm. and so he can he can play, uh, he can yeah. defend, but he can play as well, and uh, I think he does a, a great job for them. Yeah, so he, he he was actually born in Belgium, but he's played. He's play, he moved. To, I've just I've read about. He moved to Holland when he was when he was a baby, pretty much, and uh, he's he's represented Holland, uh, the Netherlands at. Uh, under 17, 19, 21s, I think. Yeah, but he's still yeah. only, I think he was born in 99, I think he's still only 21, 22, and he's played for Leeds United first team 24 times this season. Hmm. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, what, what, and he, and he, he was at one point, he was, he was, I mean, we did have his injuries and stuff, but he was, he was, he was pretty much the fan's first choice and probably still arguably right. might be for some. Um, I don't know if you've met, had much to say, much to see about him, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how his career develops. Certainly I'm looking forward to, uh, to watching that. And, um, he definitely knows he might, opinion, don't he? Yeah. He it might be the new, yeah. It might be the new Robert Molinar. Yeah, maybe with any, with any luck. <laughs> I think that the, what the players they they, they play now, they're all much better than me. So I think um, I won't I think, be too uh, harsh on yourself. I, I no, remember, yeah, I remember yeah, some good performances. No, the, the 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 style of playing, uh, which is a lot of one against ones. Uh, so so it's every every game. It's who's the strongest, who's the fastest, who's the and and uh, and they do a remarkable good job at it. And uh, credits to uh, to them. And uh, there where we. Especially the last game they played, where they went down to ten men. Yeah, I mean, in terms of being a Leeds fan, it's a great position to be in. Uh, obviously, when when you were here, we were finishing third, fourth, I think, uh, and third for the three seasons that you yeah. played at Leeds. Um, we're hopefully I start, well, started not get up this at season. eleven. Yeah, started yeah. Right. yeah, it was eleven, and then in. Uh, I remember Ian McNeil, who was top scout, who was a chief scout, saying, oh, we go for number six next season. And I thought he was crazy. I thought, how can you, how, how can you say that? But we went to, uh, uh, I think, fifth position. So uh, he was right on the mark. 
great stuff. Yeah, they did really well in that season. Yeah. Yeah. How um, how is it that 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 having Leeds back on the on the on Premier level and not being able to be at the stadium? That I think must be. We're a bit spoiled at the minute because we can still luckily we can still get every game on television. We don't miss mm. a game as such. I mean, nothing's ever going to compare to being inside Ellen Road. But certainly for me, the 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 only added uh, sort of bonus to that is that we don't miss. A minute of football, and um, we can still see every minute. I don't know how, you, how do you feel about that, actually, James. Well, um, yeah. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit different. Um, Luke, Luke doesn't attend as, uh, as as much as he probably would like to, but for me, I'm a, I'm a season ticket holder, um, so it's very, very difficult for me to be honest. I, I agree with what Lee, with what Luke's saying. Um, you know, with, with being able to obviously watch everything on TV, which is fantastic because we don't miss a game, but not being able to go to the stadium, not being able to be there with my friends and, and, the, and the other fans that I know and I've known for a long, long time. Again, not being able to celebrate promotion properly. Very, very hard. But yeah. I'm still, you know, was, I'm still very, very happy. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to obviously be back in the Premier League and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's you, still have count, you have to count your blessings. But That's it, yeah. Even, exactly. even my sons uh, uh, say, oh, this would have been, wouldn't it have been great to you know, to go a game and and enjoy um, and relive a few memories and yeah. and uh, especially with this season, I think they've done so well and uh, it's so enjoyable to watch as well. Even yeah. you know, not not all the results come your way, but it's it's been great. It's been absolutely great. Well, like you say, if, I mean, some of the results haven't gone our way, but I'd, I'd prefer to lose, you know, against Liverpool than to blow in Brentford in the Championship. You know, it's, it's there's there's definite levels there, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, hundred percent. Well, it's 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 good that they've they've uh, come out of that league because it's hard to come out of, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. definitely. Yeah, um... Yeah, de- definitely. Um, so what we like to do, uh, Robert, on on towards the end of the show is is I like to ask each and every guest of ours uh, a few, just a few questions off the cuff, and you just have to give me short, punchy, first thing that comes to your head type answers. Don't worry about offending Not anybody because uh, <laughs> I, I do th- I do that every week. So. Um, so if there's anything you're not comfortable answering, don't worry. Just say that. I'm not happy with that. And I'll, I'll tell me you're going to beat me up when you uh, when you see me. Um, I try to stay so, decent. Yeah. <laughs> so the first question is the best player you've ever played with in terms of ability. Uh, Harry Kuehl. The best player you ever played against. Um, Romario. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, is there anybody that you actually don't like in football? Ooh, don't like. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Some players. Some players. I, I, I won't na- name any names because I, I can't think of any. Maybe maybe <laughs> one, uh, which is a, is a Dutch player. Some players you would love to have on your side. Yeah. Uh, because they're a pain in the ass to play against, and they're yeah. uh, they're not nice. Uh, they play good, well, uh, good football. Um, and and Mark van Bommel, I don't know if you know oh, him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was he was such a player, um, very good uh, captain of PSV, uh, annoying, uh, always talking to the ref. <laughs> uh, you know those those players um, and. Uh, maybe a good name, uh, Ferguson, Everton, Ferguson. Yeah, I didn't Duncan like Ferguson. playing yeah, Ferguson. The, Duncan. I, I, um, brilliant guy, I think, but uh, I had a hard time playing against him. His his, his arms were always everywhere, especially in my face. So it was hard, <laughs> to, play, hard to play Brilliant. against him. Yeah, Brilliant. and and I I did. Uh, uh, on the other hand, oh maybe uh, your next question will will be. No, you carry on. Right. No, 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 go ahead. I was on. I was on about the uh, Alan Shearer was a, was a very good player, but I always, I think I had two man of the matches. Scarling 
calling many of the matches against him. Yeah, yeah. One at at Leeds and I think one at uh, Bradford. So I did well against him. Uh, yeah. But he was obviously also uh, one of the top strikers. Yeah, Please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next question: Leeds, to, would you prefer Leeds to win the Premier League or Holland to win a World Cup? Ooh. Shocked him that much. He's That's gone. a good choice. <laughs> uh, um, just so you know, Robert, this is going out to the dominantly Leeds like fans. <laughs> Leeds <laughs> Le- yeah, are down to go with the... in in that questions league. I'm afraid. <laughs> I have to go with Leeds winning the Premier League. Oh, really? We'll take that. We'll wow. Take yeah, that. then we'll you definitely will. take that one. Um, it's a hard one, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leeds versus Bradford in the FA Cup final. Who wins? Who do you want to win? Sorry, it's obvious who wins, but who would you like to win? Leeds. Leeds. Good show. Hey, we, we, we'll have him back, won't we? Yeah, we'll have him back. back. You can come back, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then one more, one more, a bit more personal, I suppose, question. Um, uh, and it doesn't have to be related to football, but who is your all-time hero? Who? All-time hero. Mm. Not it's really football. Yeah, it doesn't have to yeah. be. It can be. It often it, it knocks people back. They're thinking, "Ooh," and they and they'll they'll sit and they'll think for a little while. Yeah, it it is such a hard one because when you're thinking of somebody that you only know from television or from football, and you know, like a Johan Cruyff kind of person that you know. Obviously, he he was important for every Dutch player at my age because he was just you know remarkable and 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 uh, in in any way um, uh, my dad, uh, my brother, uh, who obviously were, were very uh, keen on me uh, going going into football and and. Uh, uh, you know, my my brother is seven and a half years older than me, but I could always join along when he went out with his friends uh, on football, and I could join in. So that maybe toughened toughened me up a little bit. Uh, but obviously, that is you know something that um, uh, you know I can't can't imagine playing football without. Him being my bigger yeah. brother and and and, uh, and and showing me all the all the ins and outs as you, as you will. Safe so, to say uh, that your answer is very much uh, very much family orientated. Yeah, you're you're obviously okay. quite clearly a family man. A lot a lot of uh, lot of passion there for, for for the family and stuff. So yeah, really 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 nice to hear that. I think we had uh, Gilfy. Did Gilfy choose Muhammad Ali? Ooh. Ooh. I can't remember anyway. We have, we have we have all sorts of different different uh, different answers there. I think that's the first time somebody said their family members though, which is quite interesting. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's it for my questions. Uh, one thing I just wanted to add, for the quick fire questions. One final thing I just wanted to ask you. I've read a couple of conflicting reports about this, um, and I didn't want to call you it before we got on the call. So uh, you obviously developed a uh, a nickname while you were at Leeds United. Uh, yes. That, now there's 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 conflicting as I say conflicting reports around whether you actually li- took a dislike into that or you didn't bother yeah what what was that all about? No, I loved it. I loved it, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it was obviously it was very much, and that is something I also picked up in English football. It was always about you know being hard and being tough and being strong and and somehow I got it into my head that. It was also a little bit about, you know, playing football. So I didn't want to uh, having the upper hand, uh, but uh, I loved it. I loved uh, uh, having that nickname, and and um, so so no, it. I, I I remember having made that comment. I think maybe in a in a in a newspaper where I was, you know, wanting to be known my football, which. Probably a little bit out of my depth at that point, but 
you know, you never know. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Be, being an arrogant Dutchman uh, and, and, <laughs> uh, and trying trying to be known as your football, but we had Burkamp at that stage in, in England and we had Overmars at that stage in, in England and uh, uh, Van Nistelrooy and what have you. They Hasselbank towards the end of towards the end Hassel, of your time. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Floyd, yeah. No, that, yeah, Jimmy came uh, six months after I came. Uh, so, um, and he was known about his football, and and I have to accept that I was uh, known about uh, being being a hard man, maybe, and and uh, and and not so much the football. So I have to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So, I think you've been a bit harsh on yourself there, Robert. I thought yeah, you definitely. Were, you, uh, yeah. Certainly, from from what I remember, I mean, I was I was relatively uh, relatively young um, when 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 you were at Leeds, but I certainly remember uh, watching some of your performances, uh, uh, commanding centre back performances. Yeah, I might add. I, um, my, first, my first pass against Leicester, with I, I played a pass, uh, I played a few passes back at the at the goalkeeper at, at Nigel, which I got told that um, from George Graham, uh, the crowds don't see you passing the ball back at your own goalkeeper. So uh, put it in the channel. That was that was one comment. But I also made uh, one with my outside of my right foot uh, across the pitch at the back. And I remember the, 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 the cop end at, uh, cheering that pass. It was it was mm-hmm. phenomenal. It was great. So uh, uh, and I still uh, uh, Simon Stone, who's, who's a who's a guy who uh, pl- uh, 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 wrote for the uh, uh, Evening Post, who became a friend of mine, and he said, "Well, we had somebody that came from Holland, um, a small club that we didn't know, and he could he could even play the ball with his outside right foot, uh, and we weren't used to having uh, centre halves uh, being able to play." Uh, football, like you did, so that that was his comment. So, uh, um, so hopefully, I, I contributed a little bit on that yeah. on that part. Absolutely, hundred percent. Bit of a cult hero now. Yeah. Anything uh, to add, James? No, I think um, I think I think that's it. I think that's all we've. Uh, we, I think we've questioned you to death. We've got some really yeah. good from you. So thank you very very much for coming and joining us. Thanks for taking time out to come and uh, speak to us. It's been very enlightening for us. It's been great. Um, Agreed. But th- thanks again for coming on. And hopefully, yeah. when when you're back over, we may uh, we may catch you for a beer or something when you're back with you. Well, I hope to be over uh, soon. Uh, and full full crowds in the stadium. Absolutely. So, um, I I love this. Love to uh, catch my en- English up a little bit. And uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. And no, uh, well, uh, pleasure. Uh, well, maybe maybe next time. Wonderful. Perfect. Any is there any 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 final messages you want to pass on to to, to everybody who watches this? Is, Predominant Leeds fans, uh, I can certainly tell on behalf of, 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 of myself and, and the majority of Leeds fans, it's been an absolute pleasure to having you on and, and, and yeah. getting to speak to you. Um, is there anything, you just any final closing comments you'd like to add uh, towards the end of this video? I just hope that uh, we can put an end to this COVID-19 stuff and uh, hope the supporters um, that support Leeds get, can get back in that stadium enjoying their uh, team. And uh, and hopefully shout them on uh, onto uh, winning ways. Well said. Well Excellent. said. Thank you ever so much. Can we get a lead salute, for Robert? Us. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thank you again. Thanks ever so much. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.